Welcome to Season Chasers. I'm Rob Freeman. Those that love nature and outdoor sports spend a lot of quality time looking for adventure throughout the year. The more you study, the more you learn about the peak seasons in nature. It's fun to know when it's best to go fishing or hunting, when it's time to pick blueberries, wild mushrooms, or native pecans. Sometimes the peak season is close to home, right in your own backyard, or it could be miles away near the mountains and the sea. Either way, this program will chase the seasons where the action is hot. Well, at first, you know, I was starting to look up some recipes for tag soup or stew, but uh, maybe not. <laughs> maybe get to use a tag on a deer, actually. If I was the type of uh, deer hunter that painted my face, I probably would have gone through several buckets of face paint this year because I uh, spent a lot of time waiting on deer. This one what's going home with Burnham. Why don't you guys get in there? Go ahead and get in the truck. The season is winter time. It's the day before Christmas. The Kansas rifle season has already ended, but the archery season allows hunters to fill a tag through the end of December. And that deadline's getting really close. I'd like to have something to show for all the hours that I've hunted deer this time. If those does just across the fence wander into crossbow range, Jason and I will try to be ready. Jason and I are secluded in his friend Butch's pop-up blind. It's a setup near a corn feeder where two tree lines cross each other. We know that the deer have been getting some of this corn. That is, if they get to it before the crows, the squirrels, and the songbirds. They all regularly feed on the corn out of that big blue barrel. We figure if the crows, the blue jays, and cardinals don't see us, then maybe the deer won't see us either. It's not very long before more deer cross the fence, but these are still beyond sensible range for a crossbow or a compound bow. Then when we least expect it, two does appear from the woods. This isn't the ideal camera angle here. But you can see that the crossbow bolt means business when it connects with that deer. Season chasers. Finally got something to haul out of here. <laughs> Woo -woo. Well, at first, you know, I was starting to look up some recipes for tag soup or stew, but uh, maybe not. <laughs> maybe get to use a tag on a deer, actually. Alright, well 
this is the the uh, Christmas Eve Kansas whitetail doe tag. First one filled this season, and I uh, was real pleased to get this one with a crossbow. And uh, not sure exactly where it hit, but it didn't go far. Quite sure of that. And uh, I think uh, something I've learned about this crossbow business is if you can get it within 30 yards, it makes a big, big difference. So uh, this was a really lethal shot. Doesn't look like it uh, tore much up. I'm going to get some some good meat off of this and uh, good wintertime treats. So uh, glad to uh, film my first tag with a with a crossbow. And uh, I've been out a lot this season. And I was uh, joking with Jason earlier that uh, if I was the type of uh, deer hunter that painted my face I probably would have gone through several buckets of face paint this year because I uh, spent a lot of time waiting on deer and uh, when this one came through and gave me a good sideways angle uh, I'm glad to take that shot and uh, take this one home thanks uh, for the action today hope you enjoyed it on Season Chasers 100% real Waka Waka when you're out here waiting on deer, you're often entertained by the other wildlife. On this cold day just after Christmas, this chubby red squirrel showed off some of its bird pointing skills, or something like that. This time Butch and I are out in the same tree line, and the plan was for Butch to get one with his bow, and I had the crossbow for backup. On this deer visit, we had a little more advance notice and got a better look at the two of them coming on in. So far, we fooled the crows and the other critters. Now, they all have sharp eyes and keen hearing, but none of them have any real sense of smell. Butch gets prepared as the larger of the two does heads for the feeder and into our range. It's funny how you can't miss a little squirrel up in this area, but a full-sized deer seems to disappear right behind a snowy tree trunk. She's still there and coming closer. From his angle, Butch now has a tree in the way, but I've got the open shot. This slowed down replay shows the bolt passing through the deer. Then it sticks into a tree behind it and you see some of the snow fall off as it hits the tree. All right, we've recovered the uh, bolt and uh, it's got blood all over it and we've got blood on the ground here and we've got some fresh snow and it's headed off this way so uh, we're gonna follow this blood trail and see if we can uh, find where it ended up all right looks like it went this way butch what do you think yep, right up over that little log. pretty good trail here 
Yep. Well, look at this trail. I think we got it. I'm thinking she's down. What you call tender vittles. Whew. Made it just this far. It's not a real big one, but the bigger one figured us out. Went in over here, came out there. So super. Glad to glad to get this one. Well, this little doe walked just a little bit too close to the uh, pop-up blind this morning, and. Uh, Butch and I were watching when the uh, two of them came right into the feeding area here and uh, he was working on that bigger one and she got to a point where uh, she was just a little bit nervous and uh, turned the other way but this one stayed in right in range and uh, it was behind the tree for Butch but uh, I went ahead and launched another broadhead at it and uh, this one went all the way through and uh, she still ran about 100, 120 yards. So it's a small doe, but uh, we've got extra tags here, and uh, that's the thing in Kansas. I believe you can get uh, one buck tag and uh, as many as four or five additional doe tags. And uh, with the population ratio of does to bucks, it's good to take some of these out of here. And uh, this is uh, not a great big trophy, but it's uh, going to make some great freezer meat and uh, not torn up at all and uh, going to be extra extra tender. This one was within about 30-35 yards and uh, uh, it's a one shot deal. But uh, thanks Butch and uh, thanks Jason for uh, help on this one and we've got it rigged up safari style to get it off across this muddy field. And uh, as uh, snowy and muddy as it's been, uh, this isn't uh, where you want to be driving the ATVs uh, on a plowed uh, planted field like this so uh, we're going to get it out the old-fashioned way and uh, thanks for coming along today and sharing this with us on Season Chasers. Deer season! Woo woo! This one was going home with Burnham. We might want to go ahead and get in the truck. Why don't you guys get in there? Go ahead and get in the truck. Salmon fishing in Alaska's bear country, and a look at some of Alaska's rigs in regular service. It's after the break today on Season Chasers. It's almost time to unwrap the new boats for Albers Marine's 9th Annual Fishing and Hunting Show, January 24th and 25th at Pittsburgh's Meadowbrook Mall. Admission is free. Check out the new boats, motors, and accessories for your time on the water. ATVs truck accessories, meat processing, antique lures, campers, taxidermy, scuba diving, golf carts, pet foods, archery, and lots and lots of outdoor fun. Kids casting contest on Saturday 10 to 2. Plus seminars featuring Mike Webb, Table Rock Bass Professional, at 1 p.m. on Saturday. And Season Chasers Rob Freeman with fishing tips at 2 p.m. Saturday. Parking and admission is free in the climate-controlled comfort of Pittsburgh's Meadowbrook Mall. See you January 24th and 25th. It's Albers Marine 9th Annual Fishing and Hunting Show. Don't miss it. Hi, I'm Sean with B&R Electric. Give us a call for all your electric needs. We do new additions, remodels, panel upgrades, any kind of wiring that you can desire, we can do it. Owner is always on site. Call us, 620-232-9473, B&R Electric, LLC. 620-232-9473. Quality and service you can depend on. I guarantee it. They're counting down the days till spring at Blue Ribbon Farm and Home. Now's the time to prepare your garden for the spring weather ahead. Blue Ribbon has hundreds of varieties of top quality garden seed so you can get started. Whether you have a lap dog, a sport dog, chickens, or a goofy goat, 
Blue Ribbon Farm and Home has all the feeds you'll ever need. You talk about a goofy goat, and this is the goofy goat right here. Extreme environments can cause a spontaneous change in DNA, resulting in unexpected power and agility. Introducing the all-new, all-powerful Gator RSX 850i. 62 horsepower, a fully independent multi-link suspension, and a top speed of 53 miles per hour. It's a whole new species of Gator. Come on out to Pawnee Wildlife Preserve where it's pheasant season now through the end of March. And some people don't think of eastern Kansas as a place for wild pheasants, but I guarantee there's no slow flying ones out here. We've got ringneck pheasants and uh, there's no daily limit. We're open daily with an extended season and no daily limits for pheasants, chucker, and quail. Pawnee is a great place for dog training, private field hunts, or group events. So give us a call at the number on your screen and come on out for a nice day in the country at Pawnee Wildlife Preserve, Fort Scott, Kansas. Ready to go? <laughs> it's summer here in Alaska and I wanted to show you some of the pickup trucks that are still in use over here in this bush area. This one's a 59 Chevy and I can assure you it's made lots of trips to the river it's made lots of trips to the airstrip and lots and lots of trips to the landfill as well as the beach around here. And uh, once a rig like this comes over to a bush area, it never goes back. And just so you know, this one still runs and uh, was used to move around the family that owns it earlier this year. And it's uh, ready to run again. Um, the thing about uh, bush rigs over here is uh, they certainly won't win any beauty contest in town, but if it runs, it's just about golden. Now I've got two rigs that I use over here. One of them's an 82 Dodge four-wheel drive, and it's certainly not going to win any beauty contest. But uh, this one came over here in 1994, uh, which you can tell by the tag on the front. Uh, this one doesn't have a back tag any longer because a doctor from Oklahoma talked me out of it one year. Now there aren't any car washes over here on uh, this side of Cook Inlet and it probably wouldn't make much difference. I could wash both of these rigs every day and they probably still look just the way they are. The visitors we have up here feel they're really styling uh, when they get to ride around in my 97 Ford Expedition. And it's got a super smooth ride and hardly any cracks in the glass and that's hard to say about most of the bush rigs around here. Now what you're seeing is uh, not a junkyard down at our airport. This is what we call long-term parking. And most of these vehicles actually do run. And uh, you can kind of tell the year that uh, these came over to this bush area because we're riding on private roads and it's no longer necessary to renew the tags on them. So the last tag sticker on just about every vehicle in here reveals probably the last year it was in town on regular service and uh, like I said some of these are uh, uh, pretty uh, pretty well worn and most of them run except a few of these that have trees growing up through the hoods of them they probably haven't run for a while uh, but the rest of these do including this really highly modified pickup rig and uh, you'll just have to use your imagination what the POS stands for Hey everybody, it's silver season here in Alaska and uh, Burnham and I got up early today to uh, come down here on the river and uh, see if we can't tie into some silver salmon. And uh, we found some in this pool and uh, didn't get that one all the way in, but uh, I think there's more in here and uh, we're going to try to get some big ones on the bank today. It's silver salmon season. It's uh, one of the last days of July and it's just getting started up here in West Cook in Alaska. And, uh, Try to get some up here and show them to you today on Season Chasers. Thanks for coming along. We've hiked downstream. 
looking for silver salmon. And uh, we're gonna let this guy go, Burnham. Look at the scar on him. Have you got a scar, Daddy? Yeah. We think there's some more fresh ones in here, so we're gonna let this guy go. We're using single hook spinner baits. It makes it easy to let him go. Oh, I see. See, he's got a scar uh -huh. on this side, and we're just gonna keep the the ones uh, that are perfect. There should be plenty of them in here. But uh, silver salmon on this small river, and uh, we'll see if we can get some in here that uh, the fillets are exactly perfect, and they're gonna end up in the vacuum sealer and headed to Kansas, yeah. along with Burnham. But uh, they're right in here in this deep water. And this is one of those resting pools that uh, once you cast up here and swing through here, yeah, right under that trail of bubbles. That's where we find them in the most oxygenated little slice of this river is where they want to rest. And uh, they'll rest in these pools and work their way up to the prime spawning grounds. But right now, here's where we're finding them, pretty close to uh, Cook Inlet. I'm using a spinner bait. Burnham's trying salmon eggs. I'm gonna walk up here. Yeah, I'm gonna this curve and I'll work it all the way down. And we're just now getting to a good spot. The place we're really wanting to target is just downstream. And uh, we want to try this deep pool first. And we'll move on down in a minute. Might pull one more out of here, you just never know. We found some silver salmon. This one what's going home with Burnham. Look at this guy, Burnham. Ooh, that's a good fish. Grilling size. Come on, Get right in there. This was on a number five Vibrac spinner with a single hook. This will get our stringer started. Silver salmon. And this is what we came down here for. We'll get this guy on the stringer. You pull a gill on these to get the blood out of them because that doesn't do you any good. And uh, that makes the meat have the best flavor and uh, the best shelf life. We'll get this guy on the stringer and now burn him at your turn. <laughs> This one's got a scar on it. No, it's a different one. I'm going to keep it anyway. It's not that bad. one more on. This one's got another hunk out of it. Look at this. Burn them. It does. Yeah. I'm not going to be able to keep this. I don't want to. It's a wild Pacific salmon and uh, this one has gotten away from a seal. It's got some really bad bites on it. We're gonna let this guy go right in the part we want to eat. I think it's gonna be okay, but uh, we're gonna keep it in the water. Oop. Try to keep it in the water. Try to get back and do its spawning mission. But uh, with these wild salmon, sometimes they got a little bit of a scar on it. We're gonna let that one go and try to get a better one. A bigger one here in Alaska on season change. After a relaxing day of salmon fishing, there's no need to suffer up here. The fresh asparagus that Burnham brought looks pretty good on a plate next to grilled silver salmon.
Well, we're out here on the riverbank trying to find some silver salmon. And uh, here's evidence of some of the creatures that we shared this river with. And this is a uh, brown bear. And you can tell by when you look real closely here at the front paw, you can kind of see how the claws strike the ground head of the toes a pretty good distance. That's a front paw. This is what its back foot looks like next to another front paw. We hope this one's already sleeping for the day. We can make most of these tracks at night. But, uh, we're trying to get some silver salmon here and have this place to ourselves for a little while. Share this river with the bears. That's how we do it on season chasers. At another nearby river one day, we had a big brown bear walk our way as we were unloading the truck. He's certainly being casual about it. I'll say that. He didn't see us. Three Colorado visitors got a look at this one and one of them snapped some really good long distance pictures as he headed right for us. Four years old at least. It's got a hump. We might want to go ahead and get in the truck. Why don't you guys get in there? Go ahead and get in the truck. As two of the fishermen got in the truck, the other one stepped out in the road. He sees us. Oh, that's a good bear. At all. They can't no. see very long, very far. He okay. saw us moving around. Look, that's a good bear. Look fish. Not like the sleepy bears you see in the zoo. <laughs> walker, walker. Tune in each week for some of the stuff you just won't see on other shows. Outdoors, wildlife, and a life of adventure. Being on the lookout for natural foods and making the most what the wildlife provides. Study, learn, and share the great outdoors with someone who's important to you.